Hi guys, welcome to our short short series. Today we are going to discuss about the diuretics of the pharmacology topics. It can be asked in an image based question or it can be asked directly from the pharmacology topic. So let's dive into this topic. Before we proceed to the topic, I want you guys to subscribe to this channel, show your support and subscribe to this channel. The more subscription and the likes for the each video will reach to the many students and it will be helpful for the students those who are preparing for the FMG and NEET PG. So thank you for understanding. Let's start our discussion, diuretic drugs. So first thing is that we have to understand what is the normal mechanism of the nephron. We have kidney consists of 1 million or the more than 1 million of nephrons in the each kidney. So each kidney will function accordingly so that we can excrete the whatever the waste is produced in our body and also we can make sure that our the electrolytes is normally reabsorbed into the body and some of the electrolytes is secreted from our body. So the proximal convoluted tubule and in the proximal convoluted tubule most of the 90% okay the 90% of all sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium everything will be reabsorbed here even with the glucose and water all will be reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule and thin descending loop limb here the most of the water content will be reabsorbed and to the thick ascending limb guys here here the most of the sodium potassium and also your chloride all these ions and the electrolytes will be reabsorbed from the thick ascending limb and, and next coming to the distal convoluted tubule here the most of the sodium will be reabsorbed still here and also the other electrolyte that is your chloride will be reabsorbed here and this is your collecting tubule most of the water and remaining all the ions like sodium potassium calcium magnesium all will be reabsorbed here so but most of the content will be due to the anti-diuretic hormone the water will be reabsorbed from the collecting tube this is how the normal mechanism of the nephron will be but let's dive into the diuretics and their site of action here the color based picture you can understand the mannitol the most of the mannitol that is your osmotic diuretic what is the osmotic diuretic guys that is mostly your permeable to water only as i said the while ago here what is the mostly reabsorbed that is your h2o that is what your water this is your osmotic diuretics and next coming to the acetozolamide what is the acetozolamide this is your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and these are these are reabsorbed or the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are mostly worked at the proximal convoluted lumen this is where the drugs like acetozolamide dozolamide all these drugs will be working and next coming to the thick ascending limb where there is your loop diuretics will be occur and this is what we discussed sodium potassium and the chloride this is where the most of the channels will be inhibited by the loop diuretics and next coming to the distal convoluted tubule here we can see the sodium and the chloride channels are inhibited by the thiazide diuretics and potassium sparing diuretics what we'll see anti-diuretic hormone and also the potassium will be spared we are not not actually blocking the potassium we are actually retaining the potassium from this side so this is how the normal diuretics and their site of action according to the normal site of function we are just inhibiting and allowing the drugs to use here and when the water and the co2 will combinedly form the h2 co 3 this is your carbonic acid and after this carbonic acid we have the carbonic enrise enzyme and this will convert into the h2o and the co2 and after this will become formed as a hco3 and also the acid h plus ion so to stop this carbonic anhydrase enzyme we are going to inhibit that so that this carbonic carbonic acid will be highly concentrated at this site where we can use in which patients we will be going to use with those who are suffering from the high ventilation right in the those who are in the high altitude we are going to use these drugs and next where we are going to use these drugs we can use those who are suffering from the metabolic alkalosis the patient those who are suffering from the metabolic alkalosis or the respiratory alkalosis we can use these drugs and also acute closure like coma we can use these patients But key first side effect that you have to remember is that is your metabolic acidosis will be occurring in these patients and kidney stones are occurred in these patients. And patients, those who are 
taking this carbonic hydride risk they are highly risk at the sulfa allergy and the type 2 rta is at risk in this patients all this will be caused in the carbonic anhydrous inhibitors drugs and next moving on to the the loop diuretics drugs in the loop diuretics drugs what is the mechanism of action where it is occurred guys this is occurring at the thick ascending limb why we are blocking the sodium potassium and the chloride where we use this drugs we are used in the hypertension patients we can use this in the edema patients this is the best drug of the choice for the pulmonary edema or the any nephrotic syndrome or any other edema that is causing due to the liver failure or the nephrotic syndrome or the heart failure we can use the drug loop diuretics and we can use this drug those who are patients suffering from the chronic renal failure the ckd patients also we can use because these are renal safe patients at what level at the less than 40 gfr also we can use this drugs as a drug of the choice and also those who are suffering from the iodide poisoning bromide poisoning also we can use this drugs what what is the concern about these drugs that we have to take note guys these drugs are highly ototoxic what are those drugs we are highly ototoxic remember e for ear and e for ethacrynic acid okay ethacrynic acid these are the drugs that is highly ototoxic and we also have the other drugs that we can remember that is your furosemide right commonly we use this furosemide drugs as a lasix in the hospital settings what are the other side effects that we have to know take note loops lose everything okay loops lose everything what are the meaning of this loops lose everything that is your sodium is lost potassium is lost chloride is lost calcium is lost and even chloride is lost all the electrolytes will be lost by the loop diuretics and this can cause the dehydration dehydration in the patient the mostly is the hyperkalemia and the hyperkalemia is most pronounced and the other things that can happen in this patient is dyslipidemia why dyslipidemia because see this is actually acting on the beta 3 receptors beta 3 receptors is more for the lipolysis and they can worsen the gout worsen the gout as a compensation the more gout like hyperuricemia can happen in the body and it can worsen the gout condition also this is what your loop diuretics will be working next next moving on to the osmotic diuretics osmotic diuretics where this is occurring this is actually occurring in the thin descending limb right thin descending limb and mostly this is on what h2 only the most permeable to water but what actually these drugs will do the example that we have here the drug is your manitol the manitol will work as a when there is a water in the interstitial fluid from the interstitial fluid it will be converting those the, the it will be sending that fluid to the intravascular space it can send that water to the intravascular space this is how the osmotic diuretics will be working and what are the conditions that we can use still we can use in the patients those who are having the edema especially the cerebral edema patients okay cerebral edema patients we can use and we can use in the icp patients those who are having the high intracranial pressure those who is in the dialysis disequilibrium patients and the most commonly this is a drug of the choice for your acute closure glycoma remember this is also a drug of the choice for your acute closure glycoma as a emergency drug please don't give okay please don't give in the pulmonary edema heart failure patients and those who are suffering from the cirrhosis all these patients the manitol drug is a contraindication and other what other thing that you have to take note for the manitol is a potassium and the sodium are very high potassium and the sodium are very high at the renal level okay renal level but at the cellular level the cellular level your potassium and the sodium is the very low okay this is what the difference of the osmotic diuretics how they are going to work
Next thing on to the thyroid diuretics. Thyroid diuretics, where this will be working? All we know, this is working at the DCT, distal convoluted tubule, and mostly on the sodium and the chloride channel inhibition. And again, we have to take note: this can also occur in the beta three receptors, and this will cause the how? This will cause the lipolysis. Hypolipidemia can be seen in this patient as a Sodium and the water exchange. This will cause the uric acid exchange as a compensation. This will worsen the gout in this patient. And decreased insulin, decreased insulin will cause the hyperglycemia in this patients. Okay, more pronounced conditions are hyperlipidemia, hyperuricemia, and the hyperglycemia will be worsened in this patients. And what are the conditions we can use, especially those who are having the nephrogenic especially those who are having the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus patients and those who are having the osteoporosis osteoporosis and the patients with the hypertension as a secondary condition patients those who are suffering from the ckd and the hypertension these patients also we can give these drugs and only the drug that is a very safe in this patients is that is your metazolone that is your renal safe drug guys remember this can be asked in a exam pattern what is the renal safe drug that is your metazolan these are the conditions we can give this patient and even those who are suffering from the edema also we can give the thiazide diuretics what are the examples that we have thiazide diuretics that is your hydrochlorothiazide side effects of this thiazide diuretics same like the loop diuretics it can lose the sodium potassium calcium and also magnesium but the thing that you have to remember it can be it can be given as a hypercalciuric drugs those who are suffering from the hypercalci hypercalciuric stones this is actually work as a treatment for the patients all right next what are the other things that we already discussed same the lipolysis can be seen uric acid hyperuricemia and the hyper glycemia all this will be more pronounced other than that we can also see this patients can be suffer from the metabolic alkalosis okay metabolic alkalosis is seen in this patients this way this is occurring in the collecting give you guys and there are two types of the potassium sparing drugs one is your androgen receptors okay androgen receptors this will be working as a antagonist the drugs that we have here is a one of the drug is your spironolactone and other one we have the enac channel blockers okay the epithelial sodium channel blockers that we have here the drugs we have here is the amyloride so these are the two types of drugs that is acting in the potassium sparing agents where especially those who are suffering from the ascites with the edema and those who are suffering from the resistant hypertension and those who are suffering from the congestive heart failure those who are suffering from the lidl those who are suffering from the lidl or the con syndrome even we can give this drug in the picos and even we can give in the patients those who are suffering from the ckd with the diabetes mellitus type 2 all these conditions we can give the the potassium sparing diuretics the side effects of this drugs can be what is this this is your potassium sparing so what will it cause it will cause the hyperkalemia in the patients which will cause the trigger the arrhythmia so okay? take note when you are starting the patients on the spironolactin dose tia okay it can also cause the gynecomastia impotence as we are also already blocking the androgen receptors and we can have this patient as a folic acid deficiency also seen in this patients okay it can even cause the metabolic acidosis all these are the side effects of the spironolactin drugs okay this is what the discussion about the diuretics okay so please remember focus on the high yield topics and the previous year topics for the coming up of fmg examination so remember solving the mcqs daily will boost your confidence and also boost your preparation guys so revision is very very must okay this is a cornerstone of the success for the every fmg student 
and please do join this channel in the telegram and the whatsapp group and also you can subscribe to these youtube channel soon we are going to upload the revision videos and the other important topics also so thanks for joining and